Okay? The interesting part is that as a human being, we are adaptable to that. Even we can perceive color when wearing illumination. But when it goes to machine, like this, this image, when they are printed, you see that there is a lot of variation. Even colors are not really properly understood. So, so one problem is that can you transfer color from one illumination to another one? So can you find out some relationship so that colors are transformable? In that way, we are trying to build up and color and illumination independent color representation. Okay? So that's the problem of color transfer. So how are you going to do that? And uh, so this is what we prefer. One is the deriving and illumination independent representation. These are the two steps and then the color correction for the transfer of the color. So when we are trying to derive an illumination independent representation, what we would like to do, we would like to estimate the spectral power distribution of the light source. Uh, the spectral power density of the light source. Okay? And uh, which means, again, I mean, spectral power density is, again, it's a spectrum. It's an it's a, it's a energy distribution over the uh, wavelength of the light. Within that thing, this might be radiation. But finally, uh, in our problem, in which, uh, we like to try to find out what is the overall dominant red component, dominant green component, and dominant blue one. So, what is the uh, ratio of these components, and which represents the color of the light? Okay. So, finally, computation of color constants is constant in both in this period. Like you are trying to estimate the uh, the this this color of the light, okay, color of the illumination, color of the illumination. And color correction is of course, uh, there are uh, different relationships, I am just writing that. Once you can estimate it, then it's very simple how to transfer the color from one illumination to the And in the complex domain, you like to perform all these computations with the design. Right. So there are actually two approaches. Uh, one approach says that uh, you can have uh, gray world assumption. The, here the idea is that you put, so given an image, you are trying to estimate the uh, color of illumination. So gray world assumption says that uh, so if, if your illumination, say so, so if you take a uh, sorry, if, if you take an image of a particular illumination or particular light source. Then if you take the average value of the uh, brightness, the average value of the color of, the, of each pixel, that average value will actually give you the corresponding color of the light source. Which means that if it is achromatic, then average value will be white. Okay. So that is what is the gray world. If it is a white light, then average value should be also corresponding to the white light. That means all values should be same. Red, green, blue, complex. So that's what is the great reward assumption. So uh, estimation of uh, uh, color lights, I mean, color of the light source is very simple. Just take the average value, average value of the images. You get the estimate of the light. Whereas the white product assumption, the idea is that you consider it now. This is considering the reflector. See, if there is an ideal reflector, a mirror, so you get the reflection of the light source. So the point, at that point, at the reflected point, whatever color you are getting to your sensor, that color should represent the color of the light source. That is what is the white word assumption. So in this case, we are trying to find out actually maximum value because the reflection means it, is a, it would be very, um, you know, highly, highly energetic, uh, I mean, the energy would be very high at that point. So we try to find out the maximum of red, maximum of green, and maximum of blue components, and get the color. The other method is that you can have some kind of uh, canonical, you know, you can model the light source. Uh, you, you consider some of the model light sources and observe statistically what are the colors that are introduced for different objects. Now that statistical observation is used to determine the color. So I'm not going into details of those things. So finally what we did, we actually used uh, our all DCT, you know, all the DC coefficients of the DCT blocks instead of uh, the pixels, only the DC coefficients are used 
and all these spatial domain te techniques are used for uh, determining the color of the illumination. And we found it closely matches with the sorry, it closely matches with the uh, spatial domain method. So that is the thing we, we experimentally we could find out. And what we can also I would just give you one interesting point. So this is one thing that when actually this kind of color constants, your color uh, constancy can be modeled and be used for destroying something. So it, it doesn't work. So what you need to do in that case, that first you correct the color, make the color balancing kind of thing. That is what is color restoration with the surface for. And then for minutes, then you get it. Uh, you see that it, uh, it's a different kind of result. And uh, this is an example. You can you can look at this. Uh, this thing. It's basically artificially illuminated, but the rate constant is very high. This uh, it's an industrial manufacturing unit, and uh, this is. And if we perform our enhancement algorithm, the city domain, the algorithm we uh, develop, uh, we get this kind of result. But if we perform the color constancy. If you apply any color constraints algorithm, even in the density domain algorithm, what uh, we implement it there. It's basically a kind of algorithm which is there already in the special domain, we just uh, adapted it into the density. And then if we apply the enhancement, you can see that actually this enhancement is more proper and we at least more closer to the perception. Uh, it's very difficult to measure that how good there is. It's visually you have to judge. And uh, that's what it's kind of. I think, uh, uh, anyway, this, this, this is the thing, uh, with this, I think, uh, uh, 